very warm welcome to Christchurch Cathedral for the fourth Sunday of Lent. This has been traditionally the Sunday where we take a pause in our Lent journey and where people would return back to their families and their mother church. Though today many of us are unable to go to our mother's church, we are delighted that you can join us in spirit for this diocesan church at home service. During this service, we will keep in mind particularly mothers and women all over the world who for each day it is a challenge to feed their families. So let us open our worship together by lighting a candle. This morning we pray the place before God, the life of our world, and we light this candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God forever. On this Mothering Sunday, when many are far from family, friends or loved ones, we light this candle for those who we cannot be physically present with. Blessed be God forever. We light this candle for all who are sick, all who are in hospital, all who struggle with pain, fear and sadness, and all who are grieving this day. Blessed be God forever. We light this candle for all who are isolated, lonely and worried at this time. Blessed be God forever. We light this candle for all who care for others, whether as family or friends, as doctors, nurses or carers, and for all health professionals for whom we are so deeply thankful. Blessed be God forever. On this Mothering Sunday, we light this candle for all mothers who have loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for their children. Blessed be God forever. We light this candle for all mothers who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed be God forever. We light this candle for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love, and for Mary, a reminder of your patient waiting love. Blessed be God forever.
Let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, but we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you so everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him the Lord him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up for. She said to her husband, as soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him a Nazarite for all time. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Do what seems best to you until you have weaned him only. May the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her along with a three-year-old bull and ephah of flour and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord and Shiloh, Shiloh and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull and they brought the child to Eli and said, oh my Lord, as you live, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who's, who was standing there here in your presence, praying to the Lord for this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me the petition I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. Come, children, listen to me. I will teach you. of them 
and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent, Mothering Sunday. Traditionally, of course, when young people in service were given the day off to return to their home parish church and see their families and a welcome break in the middle of the austere season of Lent. This time last year, Mothering Sunday was the last Sunday we were able to be in church and worship normally before the first COVID lockdown. It's amazing to think of the year we've had. We can feel proud of the way we've weathered it and grateful for what it's taught us, the value of solidarity and kindness and the importance of connection. But today I'd like to spend a little time thinking about mothering. Before I start, I want to say that other excellent forms of parenting are available, and also to acknowledge that our human experience of mothering or being mothered may not have been positive. There are those for whom reflecting on this will not be easy. So we approach it gently, remembering that we are all of us flawed human beings, generally trying to do the best we can sometimes in appallingly difficult circumstances. Let's have a look at the first, uh, the two readings for today, which take us to the heart of the experience of motherhood. First, we see Hannah, childless for years, yearning to become a mother. Many can identify with her pain. There was no IVF, no medical help. Her co-wife taunts her cruelly. Society looks down on her. She becomes desperate. And amazingly, after prayer, she finally conceives and gives birth. And we can just imagine what this precious child means to her. And then we find her taking the very young child, just weaned, so probably about three years old, to the temple and entrusting him to the care of strangers for the rest of his childhood as she fulfills her promise to give him back to God. From now on, she will only see him once a year when she goes up for the annual sacrifice and brings him a new set of clothes and hugs him perhaps for a few precious moments. Setting aside our modern horror at what it must have done to Samuel to be separated for, from her in this way, we see in Hannah's story an intensity of love and of sacrifice which we can only find astonishing and moving. Love and sacrifice are also present when we find Mary at the foot of the cross of crucifixion, gazing in helpless horror and anguish at the sight of her adored son dying in agony. She's carried the seeds of this within her for three decades, loving him, her firstborn, with all her being and always knowing that he was destined for things she didn't really understand. She remembers the words spoken to her in the temple at his circumcision by old Simeon. This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And now she feels the sharp pain of that sword. 
Mary is well known in Christian art and iconography as the face of suffering mother love, Our Lady of Sorrows, the Pietà, the image of her cradling the dead body of her son. Those of us who have become mothers will probably know the fierceness of the feelings which it produces, especially when our child is young, the knowledge that we would not hesitate to die in order to protect them, the strong desire to give them what they need, the bliss of a small body snuggled trustingly against ours. And however supportive our partner, we may also know the deadening tiredness which motherhood can produce, the sense of never having any time or space for ourselves, the emotional roller coaster, the stress of fitting everything in and of meeting the relentless needs of a small human, the boredom that domesticity can produce in us. But some of these are perhaps first world problems. Across the world, women are mothers in the most difficult of circumstances. In the Yemen, for example, where there is little food and great insecurity, where they themselves are helpless to provide the absolute basics of nourishment and protection for their children, where early death is an ever-present reality. This is a powerlessness which destroys as surely as do hunger and bullets. And daily in the midst of this love and this suffering, we see acts of heroic courage and self-sacrifice. What does all this teach us about God? Of course, God is intrinsically neither male nor female. God is in every way so much more than we can possibly conceive or imagine. But God created us, male and female, in his image. Images of motherhood stir in us tremendously powerful feelings. And reading the Bible for female images of God, of which there are many once we start looking for them, adds a rich and explosive dimension to the ways in which we're able to imagine God and relate to God. Julian of Norwich in the 14th century famously said, as truly as God is our father, so truly is God our mother. And she goes on to develop this idea of the fatherhood and motherhood of all three persons of the Trinity in a beautifully coherent and balanced piece of theology. Some of us find it easier to relate to God as mother than as father. God as mother can seem closer and more sympathetic. And this image can be especially helpful when we get things wrong. Julian says, but often when our falling and our wretchedness are shown to us, we are so much afraid and so greatly ashamed of ourselves that we scarcely know where we can put ourselves. But then our courteous mother does not wish us to flee away for nothing would be less pleasing to him. But he then wants us to behave like a child, for when it is distressed and frightened, it runs quickly to its mother. And if it can do no more, it calls to the mother for help with all its might. So he wants us to act as a meek child saying, my kind mother, my gracious mother, my beloved mother, have mercy on me. I have made myself filthy and unlike you, and I may not and cannot make it right, except with your help and grace. And today's psalm reassures us of this. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those who are crushed in spirit. And all of this brings us, of course, straight to the cross and the love and suffering of God in Christ for the sake of the whole world, witnessed by Mary, his mother. Christ taking into himself the pain and suffering and dysfunction of all human beings in his death, this astonishing act of self-giving love. Christ who wept over Jerusalem and who longed to gather her children under his wings as a hen gathers her chicks, restoring everyone and everything to wholeness and beauty in God's love. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, our Father and our Mother, we give you thanks and praise for all that you have made, for the stars in their splendour and the world in its wonder, and for the glorious gift of human life in all its complexity and variety. With the saints and angels in heaven, we praise your holy name. Amen. I've mentioned the appalling situation in the Yemen. If you'd like to make a donation to the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal, 
There'll be a link at the end of this service. Let us affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We We believe believe in in one one God, Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. For our intercessions this morning, when I say, God of love, the response is, hear our prayer. As children of a loving God, who always listens to our cries, let us pray in community. Loving God, you have called us to be your children, opening your arms and surrounding us with care and compassion. Thank you for your unconditional love, even though we falter and stray from your path. Call us back to you and help us to show your love in our homes, that they may be places of security and grace. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, Jesus, your son, was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. We give thanks for all families of every shape and size. Bless those who have no family. Strengthen those who live under stress. And may your love be known where no human love is found. We ask that you bless those for whom family life means anguish and disappointment. May they know your healing presence. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the Church. We pray that all may find in her their true home, that the lonely, the marginalised, the rejected may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. We give thanks and pray for the Mother's Union as they work to strengthen communities and help the most disadvantaged across the world. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. We pray especially today for the Yemen, devastated by conflict and suffering extreme deprivation, and give thanks for all who are working to relieve the suffering there. God of love, hear our prayer. Using the ending of the Mother's Union prayer. Empowered by your spirit, may we be united in prayer and worship 
and in love and service reach out as your hands across the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. The peace of the Lord always be with you. And also with you. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, your son, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. As we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless you. May God, who became incarnate by the earthly mother, bless you. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless you. May mighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Coronavirus. Tu underte coronavirus. Tu under nuevo coronavirus. 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 Declared the outbreak an international public health emergency. Corona. Corona. Coronavirus. 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 Sem fundo.